this is my 1995 Honda Civic hatchback. This car is in remarkable shape considering it's almost three decades old. When I picked up this car, it had just over 59,000 original miles on it, which is extremely rare for this generation of Civics. If you go look on Facebook Marketplace or OfferUp, you'll see that most of these Civics have 150,000 miles or more normally. The body is in really good condition and the panels are straight and free from any major damage. It has some minor small dings and scratches here and there, but it's almost 30 years old and was used as a daily driver, so it's to be expected. So the really cool thing about this Civic is when I picked it up, it was 100% original and it never had any modifications done to the car at all, which is super rare because most people that get these cars modify them to hell and back and not in a good way. Let's take a look under the hood. As you can see under the hood, it is all original and 100% stock. Nothing in the engine has ever been modified. This model, because it's a DX, even came with power steering. And although this didn't originally come with AC, the previous owner did put AC in it, but it is all the OEM AC parts. The car originally came with the OEM 13 inch wheels, but I went ahead and got the OEM 14 inch hubcaps and then I had my friend Catman grab me the OEM saw blade hubcaps, which I think look really good. And then I refinished them to give them the nice OEM silver look. And I think those came out really good. And I'll get into why I upgraded to those in a little bit. A really cool feature I like about this hatchback generation is the rear hatch window folds up and then the back tailgate actually folds down and it's really hard to find cars that do this besides trucks, which is kind of cool because you can sit on this thing, but in general, I just think it looks really cool. Even the interior on this car is all 100% original. The only thing that wasn't was the previous owner had a cassette player that was not OEM, but it was from the early 90s. So I went ahead and got rid of that. I put a block off plate here that's an OEM part from Honda and I have a JDI ghost box in there for doing Bluetooth onto the speakers. But as you can see, the rest of the car has all the original interior, the original seats, the original back seats with the seat belts. The headliner is in perfect condition. And as you can see on the odometer, we have 59,000 original miles on this car. And let's hear how it sounds starting up an almost 30 year old Honda motor that only has barely 60,000 miles. Starts right up, still almost 30 years later. As you might've noticed, this car is an automatic, which normally wouldn't be something I'm interested in. But as these cars are getting harder and harder to find in good condition, and the fact that it's super easy to convert to a manual, I decided this would be a perfect car for me to work on. It's actually much easier to find one of these in better condition when they're automatic, because most of the people who buy the automatic versions don't modify them, go figure. If you try to find an original manual one in original condition, they are usually going for around $15,000 and up on Bring a Trailer these days due to them being harder and harder to find. So they're more like collector cars. So what are my plans with this car? I want to keep this car looking as original classic Civic look as much as possible because I think these cars in stock form look really good and super clean. I'm a huge fan of these early 90s vehicles that are smaller and super simple. But I also want this car to drive and handle a lot better since these were originally designed to be glorified economy cars. I'm calling this my 50-50 hybrid build, meaning it can be daily driven on the street every day, but it can also handle driving in canyons and turns like a go-kart. I've already installed most of the suspension improvements I want on the car, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like on the front and the rear. Here are the front brakes on the car to start off with. These knuckles right here are from a 94 Integra, and I did that because I'm also using 94 Integra front calipers, which are bigger, and you need those knuckles to use the front calipers. I've also upgraded to a bigger uh, rotor from an Integra. These are brand new uh, StopTech rotors, although they are a OEM size. Uh, inside the Integra calipers, I'm using stock Nissan brake pads. I've upgraded to a StopTech stainless steel brake line. In terms of the suspension, we've got Coney Yellow Sport shocks. Uh, with those, we've got uh, ground control sleeves. And then next to that, I am using, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, right there, uh, Swift Springs. I believe these are 10K in the front and I got 9K in the rear. And then for the camber adjustment, I've gone with the Skunk 2. This is the Pro Series, which gives you that little plate so you can adjust the front camber. 
Uh, this is a really good uh, setup for just daily driving and spirited driving. You can even use this for track driving, especially if you're just staying with an NA application. On the inside here, you can also see I've installed the Integra front sway bar. This Civic normally doesn't come with it, but once you go with the Integra knuckles, you can throw on the Integra lower control arms, and then that has the provision for the end link for the sway bar right there. Uh, I've also got some hard race upgraded uh, end link bushings right there. And then down below, you probably really can't see, but those are hard race, uh, harder um, lower control arm bushings. And then right here, I've got the Buddy Club lower ball joints. And to make those Integra front calipers work correctly, I upgraded to a Integra brake booster. Now this is from a 94 that came equipped with ABS, so it is the one inch version. I also have the Integra uh, one inch mass brake master cylinder so this gives me that excess pressure I need from those bigger calipers because if you stick with using the stock Civic brake booster and master cylinder the brakes will feel super weak and barely have any pressure and it is not good to run it like that. Also while we're up here you can see the ground control top hats from my coilovers. And here are the back brakes on my Civic. You'll notice the first thing is this is a complete rear disc conversion from an Integra. This is from a 94 as well. So I took the whole rear trailing arm off the Integra so that way I could have disc uh, rear brakes instead of the factory OEM drum brakes. Now I have the uh, disc caliper back here from the Integra. This is again a stop tech, just a OEM spec rotor. Uh, I'm using the same Nissan stock brakes on here. If you take a look over here, you can see I got the same StopTech stainless steel brake lines going on in the rear as well. Again, we have the Kony rear yellow sport shocks going on here with the same ground controllers sleeves and of course the Swift uh, springs as well. We've got some True Heart uh, adjustable toe and camber arms. Let me see if I can show you that. Yep, there it is right there. And then one of my favorite things I installed is this ASR rear compliance bushing. But this one is much tougher and will last a long time. I know my buddy Catman's been rocking this for over 10 years on the track. His is still going strong. Moving on to the back side of the car, you can see I've got the ASR uh, rear lower control arms right there. And then as well, I've got the ASR rear subframe brace going on there as well. I do have the ASR rear 24 millimeter sway bar in there, but since I'm still rocking the factory exhaust, uh, it interferes with that because that factory exhaust canister is so big it rubs on there. So until I do my motor swap, I'm not gonna rock the rear sway bar. And to why I went with the 14 inch steelies for now is because once you throw on the Integra front calipers and rotors, these OEM 13 inch wheels will not clear the caliper and it will rub so I had to grab something that would fit them for now. Uh, eventually I will be going with some different wheels for doing more spirited driving but for now I got these on offer up for like 200 bucks for the full set so good deal. So that is it guys that is my 1995 Honda Civic Hatchback DX. This is what I've done so far. Apologies for not filming any of the suspension or brake install. Uh, going forward, my next step is going to be doing a K20 swap in it. I will be filming when I get around to doing that. Although, I just want to make it clear, I'm not. this is not turning into like a full-blown race car or anything. As I mentioned before, this is going to be a 50-50 build where it's something that you can drive comfortably on the street and then also go to like an occasional autocross and you know have some fun, have it be a fun little handling go-kart. I am going to be keeping the interior all stock as well. I may swap out the seats for something a little better for doing the autocross stuff. But other than that, it is going to stay mostly looking like this because I do love the clean, stock, classic Honda look. If you guys have any questions, leave them below and I'll see you on the next video.